everybody, it's Tyler here at the Michigan State Championship checking with Hall of Fame 27 Team Rush. Rush bringing another fantastic robot. They just had a win at West Michigan last week. And here they are at MSC looking fantastic as well. Take a look at Rush, by the way. They've done some cool modifications. They actually took off an entire uh, sub-assembly on the robot. So we'll be talking a little bit more about all this. But a great intake. I love their arm. The positional control that goes into it is really cool. And, of course, some very nice forks as well, too. We'll talk about some of the programming that's gone into this. All this and more. Let's learn more about Rush. This here on Charged Up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the Charge Up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. If you're attending championships, come to the Fun and FRC Discord meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the Fun and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the Fun or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. Charlie, let's start with the robot. You actually made some modifications uh, throughout the season, so I'd love to hear more about that, and then we'll go into your, uh, your ground intake and some of the belts you have as well, too. Yeah, I'd love to talk about that. Starting off for our week one and actually at the beginning of boat season, we decided we wanted to pick up cones in any orientation as well as cubes. So for that, we originally had three intake rollers and another whole subsystem back here where it would actually pick up a cone that would come in and low arms pneumatically would lift it up and orient it base down so our grabber could then transfer it but actually after our last West Michigan tournament we decided we would rather remove that subsystem as we were much faster picking up cones off of the human player double substation and it would allow us to chop off a whole lot of weight thus allowing us to actually use a different subsystem on our robot quite a bit more being our forks so that allows us to chop off all that weight back here as well as one of our rollers up here, which actually on our intake this year, it is a four bar, which is deployed by a Falcon. It is driven with a three to one reduction on another Falcon over there, all the way up. The Falcon is actually mounted off of our intake, which is not what we did last year. We just wanted to take a lot of stuff off of our intake and have it run through belts up to it. So we have a little idler here to swap it. And we also have TPU printed intake wheels right here, which were originally, we started using them for the cones, but as we scrap picking up cones from the ground, we've continued to keep them as they help with cube, yeah, cube pickup as well. Yeah. So for our intake, the whole system includes actually a leftover part of our scrap subsystem, which is these belts, which we like to refer to as the magic carpet as our scrap subsystem was the magic box and they will just bring the cube back into the grippers ready position if we want to demonstrate that right here right there it goes right into the gripper and we have had very good success with this working we have polycarbonate sheets which we have bent cut and bent to act as deflectors to more guide the cubes into their correct position and now from this state, you want to show, just drop out the back. Back level one. This is actually something removing that subsystem allows us to do now. We can now release cones and cubes out of the level to the ground level by moving our arm backwards outside. And this allows us to have faster autons and more possibilities, such as our three-piece auton. I love really hearing about the, the directions go through. You know, I have to admit, most teams we talk to, it's all about what do we add on to a robot, not necessarily what we take off. So I think that's really cool to hear about how your team has uh, analyzed the game and what's been working out best for you. And, you know, playing so many events as Rush does, you get that opportunity to do that, which is really cool. Let's keep moving on the arm. Uh, we're going to hand it over to Lauren, talk about more positional control on, on that. Just, uh, man, this arm is just awesome. And I'd just love to hear about how you came up with it, talk about the claw a little bit, and uh, anything uh, from the entire uh, assembly that you want to cover, Lauren. Thank you. A big um, 
problem we faced this season was spacing in our robot because we decided to go a little small this year. We're 24 by 26 for our chassis. So housing the entire arm system along with the gearbox and our pneumatics and motors we've found to be a bit of a challenge. So we had to prioritize making the whole system as small as possible on our robot. So we decided to create a gearbox that housed both the shoulder and elbow joints, which you see here. These are two water jet plates. It's connected to this big three by three aluminum tube, which is actually where we house our uh, air, t our pressure tank, which we've thankfully not run into many problems with. But this whole gearbox for both the shoulder and the elbow joint has an 80 to one gear ratio. Uh, they're both driven by chain, so you can see there are two motors here. This back one is for the elbow, and this motor in the front here is for the shoulder joint. And you can see for the shoulder, it connects to this chain, which drives this joint down here. And for the elbow, the chain drives this pulley, which then through a belt, which we have tension through these custom uh, 3D printed belt tensioners connects all the way up to our elbow joint where it can be driven there. We have, um, because of this belt, which we have found to work pretty well with tension the whole season, uh, we found that it would bring the arm in a little bit, which we had problems with. So to counteract this, we added a steel cable on the other side, which connects all the way to the bottom of the shoulder joint to the elbow. And that's actually helped us a lot. It keeps us really sturdy and prevents a lot of bending from happening side to side. Um, I know we'll be talking about positional control a little bit later with program, but can we uh, just see a couple of the uh, features, I guess, as the arm moves and just talking about uh, what goes into that? So those were for scoring at each level from the front. And then we also have a human player pickup position. And this position, we use sensors to close the gripper whenever we <laughs> sense a cone, which... It's moving a whole lot faster. And then we stow it, and then we would move it back out to score. So and that's an example of, with the uh, removing of the magic box, how we could just spit it out the back. So I know your arm overall looks very light, but you are still having a decent amount of weight kind of go up in the air. How are you compensating for, like, center of gravity? I know you just said you took off weight on your robot. Does that make that even more complicated? Um, well, our arm, right, weight was a big um, priority to keep weight above the shoulder joint low. And to compensate for this, we both have an almost entirely 3D printed gripper, which allows us to keep the weight at the end of the arm very, very low. And also allows us for if anything were to break, because in this game there's lots of chaos with people's arms all the way out, uh, we're able to quickly print a new one and replace it. But also something that we thought was really cool that we added this year was the use of a Bowden cable, which is the type of cable that bikes use for their brakes. So we have a one and a half inch pneumatic cylinder here mounted to the side of our arm tube, which is connected to a steel cable that runs through the Bowden cable's casing. And this casing runs all the way up the arm to where the gripper is. And this casing stays in the same place. We have it just zip tied here. And it's in this mount at the end of the gripper. And when our piston will actuate, then it will pull that cable and that cable will move throughout the entire casing and open and close the gripper. So we were able to keep the weight really low because of that, all of the pneumatics were really mounted to the base of the robot and the only weight was just this bone cable connecting to the end and we've found a lot of success with that.
Devin, I want to hear a little bit more. Uh, you know, forks on robots are so cool. I'd love to hear about that. But you're also doing a couple of uh, custom cool things with your chassis as well, too. So talk to me about that, and then we'll showcase the forks on your robot. Of course. I'll hand it off to Devin. Thank you. Yeah, so our chassis this year, like Lauren said, is 24 by 26. We're using uh, uh, Swerve Drive Specialties Mark IV eyes. And our chassis is made of Rev Max tube, which we found was pretty good because of all the holes in it. It makes it easy for mounting things. We're running an inverted belly pan, which is good for our electronics and makes them easy to access, as well as our battery is mounted low and in the back here. It, you can access it from the bottom, which is pretty nice, and also helps keep our CG low. And you got some pretty cool bumper mounts as well, too, in your robot. Talk to me about those. Yeah, so these bumper mounts are sort of a continuation of what we were doing last season. These are just thumb screws from McMaster and then, uh, and then four screws in the corner with this bracket, and that's... Uh, what's holding it on here, there's a standoff underneath that they screw into. And similar in the front, there's three screws that go into the bumper this way, and then just the thumb screw here. They're nice because they can lift off without uh, too much trouble, and we just go straight up and over the forks to get them off. Well, talk to me about the forks on your robot and uh, what's gone into those. Uh, you know, when we see forks on teams, there's kind of like teams that do the full arm curl, so to speak. Some teams lift up just a little bit. Uh, where does your team kind of fall into this and how, it's been, how has it been working out for you? Yeah, so we only lift a little bit. Um, for obvious reasons, we have a lot of things going on at the top of our robot. Our, uh, our winch part of our forks is ran by a 20 to 1 gearbox on a Falcon. And it's deployed pneumatically with this cylinder here when it deploys it's zip tied together so when it winches the zip tie that holds these two pieces together will break and allow us to winch our pivot is outside of our frame perimeter so you're actually breaking a zip, zip tie every every yeah. time you go to do that yes. yeah and our forks are actually made of solid carbon fiber uh, they're three quarter inch thick so is this the angle that you're essentially pulling up at then? That's the max we're going to get out of it? Yes. We also have a camera here so our driver can see when they're forking. It's connected to our backline light down here. Really, really cool. Uh, you know, mechanically, Rush is such a complete package for it, but there's a lot of cool programming stuff that goes into this robot as well too, Sam. So talk to me about what's gone into it from your uh, programming control. I know we'll show off a couple things in regards to how that vision works as well. Yeah, so one main thing we wanted with this robot was smooth control of the arm. To do this, we have a can coder on each joint, and this makes the programming and reading of sensor inputs very simple. We also run a can coder fuse, which actually links the can coder's angle reading to the Falcon for extra precision. Another thing on our robot that the programming uses is our two Limelight cameras. Here we have a Limelight 2 Plus, and back here a Limelight 2 you may be able to see. And these have a couple of functions. The first is in the autonomous period, we look at April tags to know where we are on the field just to validate our drivetrain odometry. And we also use these, the front one, during a match to line up to the nodes on the grid. We can demonstrate that now. So right now we're going to turn on the limelight button, right trigger. And you see the drivetrain starts to move until it's centered on the robot. And so the drivers can see what's going on. We also have a custom dashboard, which we program using Vue.js. This gives various sensor readings that may be useful to the drivers, as well as the three camera views that we have. Yeah. For our arm handoff feature, which is once we intake a cube and to get it to the gripper, we use a couple of sensors. The main one we use is this distance sensor here, which Lauren talked about earlier. And to, to use this, we put the arm in a set point for our cube intake. So when a cube comes in, the sensor detects it and closes the gripper on it. We also use this sensor for fast human player loading, which is another thing that we've really improved since West Michigan. Well, 2017 Rush, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us more about your team and your robot. Absolutely incredible. Congratulations on a great season so far. Can't wait to see what you do here at MSC. So good luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. Thank you. 
This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And first updates now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.